A new controversial tool out now allows drug users to test their street drugs for fentanyl. Fentanyl test strips were originally developed as urine tests, but they've proven effective when mixed with water and a drug residue. A Brown and University of Johns Hopkins study suggests the strips can be effective in preventing overdoses, but others are concerned at the potential negative consequences. Just the presence of it in there would maybe be enough to steer somebody away from something. In my opinion, at the same time, you don't want to be rationalizing something as being a safe and an already unsafe activity that the people are partaking in. So, The strips also don't test for all types of fentanyl or tell users how much is in a solution. Two people in Knox County have already died this year from a suspected overdose. That's according to the Knox County District Attorney General's Office. In all of 2018, 290 people died of a suspected OD. That number could change as autopsies are finalized. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, there are always ways to get help. The Tennessee Red Line offers referrals if you need help with abuse. Visit Knoxville's Metro Drug Coalition website for a confidential source for treatment. And Drug Free Kids offers strategies and tools to help parents address substance abuse. All right, now, in your morning headlines, records reveal there have been more than 80 calls for emergency help to a North Knoxville nightclub over the past two and a half years. Police say the vibe on North Broadway is connected to a deadly shooting on New Year's. KPD says the victim was taken by friends to the old St. Mary's Hospital, which is closed. Records show since mid-2016, police have responded to 30 disturbance calls. 14 happened in the last five months. Three included a weapon. The club is in Knoxville City Councilwoman Lauren Ryder's district. She says she's gotten no complaints. In talking to neighbors along the street behind it, I didn't hear any complaints about it in 2016, 17, and uh, over the last year being elected. No one's reached out to me with complaints. We reached out to the club's owner, but have not heard back. We also requested the calls for service to other area bars, Ebony Lounge in East Knoxville, Southbound in Downtown, and Cotton Eye Joe in West Knoxville. All had more than 100 calls for service in recent years, which is more than the vibe. Newport's second black mayor is now in office, and it is an historic moment for the 93% white town. Mayor Roland Dykes III took office before the holidays. His father was the first black mayor. He served until his death in 2005. In 2002, the Klan protested his father with a rally and burned a cross in the family's front yard. There are always going to be people who, for whatever reason, you know, do not, do not like black folks for whatever. I, you know, I don't, I don't understand it, but they, there are those folks out there, and I'm sure we have some in Newport. Mayor Dykes says there are always more good people than bad. He's received many notes congratulating him. Today, Knox County schools are addressing school bus safety. School security and local law enforcement are teaming up for a press conference. Leaders will focus on overall school bus safety as well as drivers repeatedly ignoring school bus stop signs. It's happening this morning at 10 a.m. Knox County students return to class next week. Knoxville Area Transit and Visit Knoxville are now encouraging you to use the trolley system. They recently took pictures with the Ice Bears and Knoxville Symphony Orchestra crossing a street in front of the trolley. Looks like Abbey Road right there. The graphic is now on the bus stop shelter on Howard Baker Avenue. Cat says they want people to use the trolley to get to events near downtown. We did it to hopefully get people to understand that they can use the trolley to get to all the events that are happening at the Civic Coliseum. The Knoxville Ice Bears play there a lot. There's a bunch of concerts, the symphony orchestra, and the trolley drops off right in front. Cat plans to add another graphic on Hill Avenue across from the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. You are watching Fox 43 News this morning. When we come back, the Lady Vols started off conference play with a win on the road against Auburn. Next up, the men's team. We hop in the sports time machine to show you why nothing is guaranteed in the SEC. And here's a look over East Tennessee on your Friday morning. The time is 7, wait for it, 21. Very nice. We will be right back. All right, let me go ahead and put on my sports hat really quick. Let's hop in the sports time machine. 2017, the Vols were 9-2 with an upset over number 18, Purdue, and nearly beating two top 10 teams in Villanova and UNC. Then came SEC play, and it did not go according to plan. Absolutely, a lot that goes into it. Courtney, yeah. thank you so much. We really appreciate it. For now, we'll send things back over to you guys in the studio. <laughs>
Memphis is getting a little tired, I think. Yeah, you I see think, that yawn? Uh, yeah, he is. He is. He's being so <laughs> patient. Thank you, Memphis. We appreciate your time. Thank you. You're watching Fox 43 News this morning. When we come back, Knoxville weekend takes us to... Actually, it's something to help take advantage of all that great weather. Thank you so much, Becca. Knoxville weekend has your food, fun, and festivities for a great weekend in East Tennessee. We're joined by Jack B. Now, uh, today, we've got a little music action. People love it. People love listening to music. What, what's happening? Exactly? Yeah, so every Friday night at 8 p.m., the Frog and Toad Dixie Quartet comes to Elkmont Exchange, and we partnered up. Welcome back. Here are the top five things you need to know this morning. Tennessee gained a new congressman for its second district. Former Knox County Mayor Tim Burchett was sworn into the seat in Washington, D.C. He even gave House Speaker Nancy Pelosi a couple of fist bumps during the ceremony. Why not? The Bearden High and UT grad has spent the last 25 years in public service. Burchett credits his mom and dad, both educators, for raising him to serve others. What would they think of you today? I think they would just be so proud they couldn't stand it. Here's a look at how far the new congressman's district stretches across East Tennessee. More than 740,000 people live in it. Jimmy Duncan and his father before him held the seat for 54 years. It's one of nine seats Tennessee holds in the House. A federal judge has ordered that a former pilot Flying J sales executive may remain free on bond while her case is appealed. Judge Curtis Collier made the ruling for Heather Jones today. This comes after an appeals court ruled her co-defendants Mark Hazelwood and Scott Wombold do not have to go to prison while their cases are reviewed. Last year, a jury convicted Jones, Hazelwood, and Wombold of taking part in a scheme to cheat some pilot fuel customers of promised rebates. During the trial, the judge agreed to let the prosecution play secret recordings on which Hazelwood, the former pilot president, made racist remarks. The former employees argue the tapes shouldn't have been played. They're now appealing their cases. A new controversial tool out now allows drug users to test their street drugs for fentanyl. Fentanyl test strips were originally developed as urine tests, but they've proven effective when mixed with water and a drug residue. A Brown and University of Johns Hopkins study suggests the strips can be effective in preventing overdoses, but others are concerned at the potential negative consequences. Just the presence of it in there would maybe be enough to steer somebody away from something. In my opinion, at the same time, you don't want to be rationalizing something as being a safe and an already unsafe activity that the people are partaking in. So, The strips also don't test for all types of fentanyl or tell users how much is in a solution. Today is the last day for you to comment on the latest draft of Recode Knoxville. If you live in the city of Knoxville, the proposed new zoning ordinance affects you. The plan is post posted online along with a map that explains the proposal. The comments will then be reviewed by Metro planners at a meeting on January 10th. And number five, a Knoxville woman is showing off her strength on national TV. All right, Emily Anzulis is part is, of Powell competed on the show Titan Games on NBC. Anzulis beat both her opponents. She won the Herculean pole in the Mount Olympus rounds. That sounds terrifying. That made her the first female Titan champion on this show. We spoke with her last month. She worked on speed, agility, and jumping to prepare for the show. You can watch her compete on the Titan Games Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. How can you do you think you could be able oh, to do gosh. Lewis, I like, feel like I look at her and I'm like, man, I need to go to the gym. Oh, well, <laughs> well sometimes I can't work I, on lifting some of those weights. Leslie, I think Leslie who works here, I mean she she, she would she could probably hold it. She's up. she's pretty she's pretty impressive, yeah. though, I've gotta say. We'll just stick to our day jobs, right? Yeah, exactly. Sports weather speaking of anchoring. Weather. There we go. Yeah, speaking of weather, we are watching an area of low pressure that's mm. bringing in rain showers. And mm. so I know if you're gonna be if you're gonna be heading out this morning, I hate to brush. It's Friday, so let's go out to the movies. Let's go out to the movies and see if Josh likes anything. I was going to sing it if you didn't, Ed. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we are heading to the movies with Josh West this morning. Josh, let's get right into it. Yeah. We have Escape Room. Yeah, it's the only thing that opened uh, this week. In really? Towns. It's okay. the major wide release for January. The first week of January isn't notoriously, uh, you know, uh, known for big Hollywood releases. They usually kind of let some. What is Sunday? The Golden Globe Awards. Co-host Andy Samberg and Sandra Oh have already rolled out the red carpet. So let's take a look at the nominees for some of the biggest awards, starting with awards for films. Nominated for Best Drama, Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, If Beale Street Could Talk, 
and a star is born. Oh, so many good ones. All right, also nominated for best comedy or musical Vice, Crazy Rich Asians, The Favorite, Green Book and Mary Poppins Returns. Vice leads all films with the most nominations. All right, let's go ahead and go to nominated for best animated films, Incredibles 2, fantastic. I love dogs. That was great. Mira, Mirai, excuse me, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and I have heard nothing but absolutely <laughs> amazing things yeah. about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I mean, how could you go wrong with that one? Well, as for individual awards, the best performance by an actor for a drama, Bradley Cooper in A Star is Born, William Defoe in At Eternity's Gate, Lucas Hedges in Boy Erased, Raheem Malik for his performance in Bohemian Rhapsody, and John David Washington in Black Klansman. I when Bradley Cooper singing in A Star Is Born, I was just <laughs> maybe it's down the middle. Uh, I haven't seen it, but it looks so good. He's he that's I, I hear it's great. My sister absolutely loves it. <laughs> uh, and finally, the actress nominated for their two minutes it fell from the tree. Uh, no broken bones or anything. The puma's fine. Aww. The puma is is uh, just fine. But jeez, that's uh. It looks like someone put a mattress out. So oh my god! Oh, well. But All he's right. okay. He's well, okay. Happy Friday, everyone. We'll leave you on that note. <laughs> See you guys later. Have a good weekend. <laughs>